So let's say we're building a tic-tac-toe game, and we've never built anything of significance in this class simply because we've under been time pressure and even the labs that we have have been relatively short. But a game like this is a little bit more hefty. And one of the first things you need to understand when you're building something that is more significant is that when you first start off, your inclination is going to be to start coding right away. As soon as you see this, okay, let's start writing some code. And this is a disaster waiting to happen because your code is going to end up being complete spaghetti. You need to sit down, and if you're working with other people, you need to sit down as a team, and you need to sort of brainstorm the best way to put this together. What that means is you need to build an architecture and a design. Now, I'm going to go through the process a little bit here and show you the simple mistakes that you're likely to make if you don't think this through. And I'm going to also explain to you something called MVC design. <clears throat> MVC stands for Model View Control. And this is one good way of designing a GUI-based system. The model refers to how the computer sees the problem. The view refers to how the user sees the problem. And the control refers to that's like the brains of the engine. And what we want to do here, this is just one way of looking at it. There are many others. But this is one possible architecture. And we want to build it like this. And these represent groups of classes that might be sitting in here. And you notice that the model and the controller talk to each other directly, and the view and the controller talk to each other directly. What's important in this architecture is not so much who talks to whom, but more importantly, who doesn't talk to whom. You notice that the model and the view, they don't talk to each other directly. All information goes through the controller. That's important because what you don't want to have happen is everything calling everything, and then you need to make a change, and it's just a complete mess. So here, we're going to funnel all information through the controller so the controller keeps tabs of what's happening in the game. So this is a good model to follow. It's not the only one. Should you consider using a different model? Absolutely. But the important thing is use something. Don't just start coding. So this is a good design. If you want to use a different design, that's fine. But have a design is what I'm really saying. Make sure you have a design. So the next thing I need to explain to you is why there should be a model and a view and why it can't be the same thing. Let's talk a little bit about this board and what you think the computer's view of the board should be. In other words, uh, what do you think inside the machine, how should we code this board and this game? What kind of data structures, what kind of integers, strings, decimal numbers, booleans, what should we use to construct this game with x's, o's, and then this, this grid here? What should that look like in the machine? Please take a good two minutes to have that discussion. OK, look up here for a second. We're going to get back to our discussion of the model, but let's just take a little sidetrack and talk about the view. What does the user see? So let's say we built this using the swing library that you're going to use for World that we've been looking at for the last few days. And how, what, what do you think will be here? We're using like the Wordle components, sorry, using the swing component that you're already familiar with. What do you think this will look like here? What do you think? It'd be some sort of grid layout, right? Probably like a three by three. I, I agree with that, sir. And what do you think w would each of these things would be? It's pretty much all we've learned. So yeah, they, they would be buttons. So you can see here that there would be buttons, and when you press the button, probably you get an X would show up, right? And then the use, and then the, maybe the computer would be the O's, and then it would like go and fill in O. And so I think you agree this would be buttons here, and uh, there would be like a two-dimensional grid layout of the buttons, right? They have nine buttons. We're all in agreement on that. And what would be on the face of the buttons? What would be these things be? What kind of data structure would be on the face of each button? There would be strings. You agree with that, right? They put a string on the face of each button. Your first thought is going to be, when we build the model, what should we build here? What's your first thought? 2D array. And now the magic question, the 2D array of what? That's a possibility. Anybody have any other ideas? Yes. Booleans? Yes, sir. Strings. Strings. I'm going to discuss these in reverse order that you have suggested them. We're going to talk about strings first. What would be the advantage of using strings for the internal model? What's the main advantage? 
You know it's an or an x, plus we're already using the strings over here, right? So maybe we could use the same model for the view and the control. We'd save a whole model. Disaster. I need to explain to you why you're going to think that. And this is, this is what happens if you start coding right away. The code's going to be like this, okay? What is the main thing that the code has to do? Now think about the controller part, okay? Here's the controller, the brains of the game. It's running the game. What's the main thing the controller is, does every move? What does it do? Like someone moves, what does it do? Checks to see if anybody won. So think about what would happen if you built this thing using strings, right? So you have an X string and an O string, and you're trying to figure out, for example, did this pattern happen over here, right? So you're going to be like, if this square dot equals X and this square dot equals X and this square, you're going to have like hundreds of lines of code there. So here is the main takeaway, and I need you to remember this the rest of your coding life. Just because you like strings doesn't mean the computer likes strings. The computer's not like you. You're a human. The computer only understands one thing. What is the only thing the computer understands? Zeros and ones. It understands numbers. It lives with the strings because you force it to, but it doesn't really like them. Not a good idea. Now, looking at this, you might say to yourself that this is naturally a Boolean system. I have X's and I have O's. Is it a Boolean system? Please discuss now. Is it a binary system? Is this tic-tac-toe board a binary system? Look at this square right here. Is it a binary system? It is not. Why not? Null is a, is a dangerous word to use. I think what you mean is an empty square where no one has gone, right? So if it's not a binary system, what kind of system is it? It's a trinary system. So the second lesson for today is initially when you examine a system, and try to simulate it, you might first think that it's a binary system, but in a lot of cases it's not a binary system, it's actually a trinary system. So if you were to use true and false for these X's and O values, you really have no way to show this state of this square right here, where, which is basically unused or hasn't gone yet. Bad idea. You don't want to be using nulls in your design to represent something real. Because why? There's a much, much better alternative. Can anyone guess what that is? Ints. We want to use ints. So now we've come to the conclusion that even though we like this nice layout with the buttons and the strings and everything, internally the computer doesn't want to deal with that. If it's going to process the board to figure out who won or what squares we can go on next, it wants to use integers. Wants to use integers. So now let's talk a little bit about what integers should we use. So we, we agree we have three states. We have this sort of empty state, then we have this X state, and then we have this O state like that, right? Those are the states that we have. So let's just pick some numbers. Let's say I go with um, 0, 1, and 2 as the values I'm going to use. So I'm going to use 0 to represent didn't go yet, and uh, 1 to represent an X, and 2 to represent an O. How might we, in code, figure out that there are three O's in a row? Should we say, if this square equals equals 2, and this square equals equals 2, and this square equals equals 2, then O has 1? Or is there a better, faster way? OK, um, how, are we, how is the controller, the, the brains of this game, going to figure out that we've got three O's in a row. You agree that if the, a row or a column or a diagonal add up to six, the only conclusion is that it's got to be three O's. So does that mean now that if it's three X's, I'm going to add up to three? See, this combination creates a three also. So turning out, it turns out that using zero, one, and two are not the best set of numbers to use in a trinary system. Tried and true, if you built trinary systems before, there's a much better set of numbers to use for these. For any trinary system, the following numbers are really, really good. See if you can figure out what those numbers are. Can anyone suggest what might be really good integers to use in a trinary system? Those are the numbers to use in a trinary system. There are other choices also. You could use like 0, 10, and 100. Those things you could use, things, something like that. But these numbers are tried and true. In fact, if you look up trinary system on Wikipedia, it'll tell you to use these numbers. I think you can see the natural appeal of these numbers. 
should be intuitive to you that these make a good set. Now, I'm going to share another secret with you, and this one, I would have given you more time to work this out if we were actually building a tic-tac-toe game, but since we're building a Wordle game, I'm just going to share this with you. If you sit down with your partner and think about this game design for a good two to three hours, you'll come to a surprising conclusion, and that is that even though that the view is a 2D array, it's actually much easier to code the model if it's a 1D array. So if you build this as a 1D array, you will find that it is much easier to process like this. You, pulled, you build it nine across, right? It's much easier to process. And the fact that your view is two-dimensional does not necessarily mean that your model needs to be two-dimensional. Now, that is an insight that you are very likely to miss when you are coding this for the first time, and you'll end up building it, and then at the end of the, after you're off, you're like, oh, I should have built a 1D model. And so you'll have to suffer with that, but I, the, mo the more you think about the design, the less code you have to write and debug later. The entire idea here, as the systems get more sophisticated, is you put more time up front doing the design work, and that way you end up with code that makes sense and is easy to maintain, easier to write, easier to debug, versus if you just sit down and start coding. And the Wordle game, in a lot of respects, is more complicated than this. And so you need to make sure you put in a goodly amount of time on Thursday to invest your time and make sure you've got the design down before you write a single line of code.